Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Ay, 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 Dabo, Sidi, Bili, Bili. Oh, Dada, Basa, Hadabo, Siti, Bahadabo, Tiba, Hadaba. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we bless you. worship you Jesus we worship you Jesus we give you praise oh Lord God hallelujah we thank you God for honoring us this morning by your presence Jesus we thank you Holy Spirit hallelujah we thank you we thank you, oh God. This cannot happen unless you are present, oh God. This cannot happen unless you are with us, Jesus. We thank you. Oh, an open heaven. Halabo, city, Bahalabo. Rete, Bahalaba, city, Bodobo. Shandaba, city, Bodobo, Bodobo, Siba. Rata, Bahalabo. Jesus, Jesus, this is you, Jesus, this is you, Jesus, we bless you, Lord God, and we honor you, thank you this morning, Almighty God, thank you, Lord God, for coming down, hallelujah, we give you praise because you have already touched our lives. Hallelujah. You've done something tremendous in us this morning. Lord, we bless you. Receive all the glory, Jesus. Receive all the honor. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. until the devil feels ashamed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have got breath, kama una sauti, una nguvu ndani yako. Nataka tumsifu, tumtukuze bwana kama utafanya vile unavyoweza kufanya. Amen. Hebu tuje hapa katikati sote. Hallelujah. Amen. Nataka tumsifu bwana usiogope yeyote ako kando yako. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Your brother, your sister who's next to you. 
Mwambie thank you for coming. Asante kuja. Hallelujah. I would like we see, we take our seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We've got some visitors in our midst. We thank God for all of you. How many of us understand English? You hear English. If I preach in English, you are comfortable. Let me see your hand. If I communicate in English, hallelujah. Wangapi awaelewi kizungu? Kama awaelewi kizungu, inuwa mkono wako ju. Tukusaidie. Wangapi awaelewi kimombo? Wanaasifiwe. Uh, nani anaweza kuwa mkalimani mzuri hapa? Tu mtakupatia kazi mahali penye upo pale. Yes. Sasa tutafanya hivi. <coughs> Mama na mkalimani wako mtaketi pale nyuma. Pale dadangu ameketi pale. Hallelujah. Sasa wewe ndio utakuwa mkalimani. Bwana asifiwe. Maana dada lazima barikiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Na nikiana lugha ile nyingine, msiketi hapa maana mkiketi hapa mtatafuta tatizo au wengine wote. Mketi pale nyuma, pale nyuma amtatatiza mtu yote. Hata mkiongea maana yake utakuwa unaongea pamoja na mimi. Bwana asifiwe. Kwa hivyo mketi tu pale nyuma, eh, usi, usi, usione shida. Pasalaya alitufundisha hii mambo na lazima tuyafanye. Alikuwa anaweka watu wawili wawili unakuwa mkalimani wa mwenzako ili kusudi asikose neno lolote. Hallelujah. We thank God because our sisters she is being sorted out and she is going to be blessed together with us. Is there any other person that is not uh, understanding English? Kuna yote ambaye aelewi kizungu vizuri anaweza kujiunga na wale ili yeye pia astatizike. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, because this is not an interpreted service, this is an English service so but we don't want to interfere with anybody who has come this morning. They need to be blessed. Praise God. And our viewers over there, welcome. The Lord bless you. I know you are going to be blessed this morning because God is here for a mission. Praise God. And the church, we're going to be blessed. Let's clap our hands and we welcome our viewers over the other side. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, today, I want to speak about when God is in charge. Wakati mungu wako usukani. Amechikilia usukani. When God is in charge, praise God. And we are going to read uh, a few scriptures as God enables us. We will begin from Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. We will start from verse number 17. Exodus 13 verse 17. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. As I begin to speak this word, oh God, as I prayed, I still pray this morning and this moment, oh Lord Jehovah, that you fill me with your word, that you give me understanding, that you give me revelation, almighty God, and that you give me utterances, almighty Father, of what I'm going to speak. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let us stand there together in uh, Exodus chapter 13. We start from verse number 17. Chapter number 13, verse 17. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God did not lead them by the way by the land of the Philistines although that was near. For God said lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea 
And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Let's start from there. Now, this is a story that is common known to us because I, most of us have learned about the exodus of the children of Israel all the way from Sunday school. And we've been teaching about this over and over. But today God is still speaking to us and is helping us understand it in a different way because there is a revelation for every word that is written in, written in the book of God. Now, God asked the children of Israel to be uh, released so that they can go and worship him. And we can see the time of these children to be released and go and worship God is already at hand. And therefore, they have to go. And the Bible says that Pharaoh had to let the people go. But God took charge immediately. Hallelujah. When the people took the first step of leaving the land of Egypt, God immediately took charge. Praise God. They knew where they were going because God had already given indication to uh, Moses that they would worship them. They knew they were going to the land of the Philistines. And it's not that they had never been to this land before. They had walked these ways. They had known the way to go to the land of the Philistines. They knew it so well. So it is, it is not something strange. If I ask us to go to Rabbi from this place, most of you will not go this direction. You will take us through a way that will let us get to Rabbi over the other side because you know the way to Rabbi. Hallelujah. If you take the opposite direction, we will tell you, hey, stop right there. You are, you, are, you are misleading us. They knew where they were going. But God took charge. Hallelujah. And this morning, I came to tell you, let God take charge. Praise God. In every circumstance that you, are, you find yourself in, let God take charge. Praise God. And sometimes when God takes, takes charge, it does not go your way because it has to go God's way. Hallelujah. I love this because the way of these children of Israel, it was not the way that Moses led them to go. They knew we need to go this way, but the commander took a different way because God was in charge. Hallelujah. If God leads you, even if the way seems not to be what you wanted, I came to tell you this morning, don't stop on the way. Hallelujah. Go on. Move on. Because there is somebody who is in charge. Hallelujah. And the name of this person is our God. He is Jehovah. He is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Holy Ghost. He is in charge of everything that happens in our lives. And I can see these people have left the land. But they did not go the way of the land of the Philistines. The Bible says, although that was near. And God said, perhaps these people, when they go this way, they will experience trouble. They will experience war. They will experience resistance. And what will they do? They will turn and go back to bondage. So God said, no, I'm not going to take them through the easier way. Because the easier way is the most difficult way. Hallelujah. Never try things that come easily because what comes easily is so difficult to accomplish. God knew the easiest way for them to go was to go through the land of the Philistines. But they had to fight the Philistines and they did not have an experience of God yet. They are experiencing God for the first time. These were people who were in bondage many years. They knew other gods. They, the fact that they were Israelites, they knew they have a God in heaven. But where they were living, they were other foreign gods. So they didn't have an experience with God. They didn't know how their God works. Though they had an history of how, how God works. But they didn't have an experience. 
praise God. Hallelujah. God leads us through an experience for him, to, for us to learn him, to know him. And which is the best way for God to give you experience? is the difficult way. Hallelujah. The way of the cross is not easy. The Bible says, narrow is the road that gets to the eternal life. And it is difficult. It is not easy. And people try to avoid it. But the wide one, it is very comfortable. And many people want to go to the wide one. This way that God was leading them, it was not the easier way. It was the difficult way. Hallelujah. So God led the people around the way into the wilderness by the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went in according to their ranks. So they went, the children, their mothers, and everything with them going to the promised land but taking a different route. Praise God. How I pray that we shall, li we shall listen to God. Because God spoke to Moses. Moses heard God. Moses led the children of Israel through the right way. Praise God. Hallelujah. When Moses was sent to go and deliver the children of Israel, we are not told anywhere that Moses went through the Red Sea. He went through the way that was common. Praise God. But God speaks to him and tells Moses, don't go through the common way. Go through this other way that leads the wilderness. There is an wilderness experience. Hallelujah. Go into the wilderness. Because in the wilderness, I will teach you who I am. Praise God. What is wilderness? Wilderness is anything that is not favorable to you. Anything that comes uh, and it is uncomfortable and disturbing and frustrating and painful is a wilderness to you. And God wants us to go through a wilderness so that we can see him. Hallelujah. You will never seek God if everything is comfortable to you. But I don't mean that God has to frustrate your life for you to serve him. In the midst of trouble, God will provide and then he will lift you high. Praise God. But then you'll have to go through an experience that will teach you to depend upon God. Hallelujah. If God does not take us through our wilderness, then we will not be able to learn how to depend upon God. Praise God. Many people would like to use their own knowledge, their own power, their own experience and what they have. But we can never serve God in such a way. God has never made it easy for us to serve him. Praise God. Hallelujah. I wonder why God did not look the devil at the time the devil messed up in heaven. Why could God lock him in hell at that very time? But rather he released him to the world, to the earth. Where me and you are living. God did not lock the devil. He let him lose. And he let him lose to come and tempt the very creature that God has created. You and me. The devil is right here in the world. Why did God have to do this? Because God does not uh, operate in the circumstances that are easy. God operates in the circumstances that are difficult that needs some resistance, then God will show his power. Hallelujah. Praise God. Countries like America will not have anything to fight with countries probably like Kenya because there is no experience that America will have upon Kenya. But America will go and fight countries like Iraq where there is resistance. Praise God. God works in our lives where there is resistance. For him to show his mighty power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How will you depend upon God if everything is easy and simple? If you just get everything that you need every other time. You will never value God. Others you will say it is my strength. It is my ability. It is me. It is not God. But God has to lead you. So he said. He took the children of Israel. And he said. We are going for a journey. 
We are going for your liberation, but your liberation is going to come through the wilderness. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I thank him. I thank him. I thank God because in the wilderness, God is right there. Hallelujah. God took charge over the children of Israel. And he said, let us go. And they started going. Hallelujah. Verse number 19. It says, and Moses. Let me skip 19. Let me uh, jump to verse 20. So they took their journey. From Sakoth And camped near Etham. At the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day. Or the pillar of fire by night from before them. Hallelujah. So the children of Israel begin going. But God ensures that something has to happen before them. For them to be able to see that I'm God. God brings a pillar. A, a pillar of cloud. A big, this was a big, a big group of people. So it was not a simple. It was, it was not a small pillar. It was a big pillar. You know pillars. For those of us who probably don't understand what a pillar is. If you look in a, a construction. A house that is being constructed. You just, if you can look at that corner, or you look at this other corner, or that one, or even that one, you'll see some tumors are, are protruding outside. Right there, there is what we call a pillar that is supporting this building. But see, that's a small pillar. Praise God. So you can look at that pillar and see that it is for a purpose. Now, God had to put a pillar, and this could have been a big pillar, probably stretching all the way from the ocean, probably all the way, I don't know how far it could have been, it could have gone, but it was a big pillar. So the children of Israel realizes, ah, there is God ahead of us. Now they were able to believe Moses. They were able to follow Moses, because there was a pillar of the cloud covering them. That no one could come close to them. So they were not able to see what is happening at the back. Because there is a pillar of cloud. And at night. Light shines ahead of them. That pillar moves from the back. It goes in the front. It becomes a pillar of fire. It provides light. So the children of Israel. Were able to realize. There is God with us. We are not moving alone. So they followed Moses. Though they didn't know where they were going, they followed Moses. The Red Sea was not near. It was very far. Why do I say so? Verse number 22, it tells us exactly. It says, he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by the night uh, from before them. Hallelujah. Let, let me read from verse 21 because it, it will give us what I'm just saying. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way. And night in a pillar of fire to give them light as to go day and night. So it was a long journey. The Red Sea was, you know, sometimes we, might, we could just, now that we're in Mombasa, it and Austin is just right here. So somebody would just say, they just left their house. They just walked a few meters. They were in the Red Sea. It was not as close. Probably it was as far as problem to turn day. They had to walk many days. They were going a journey they didn't know. But God provides a pillar. Hallelujah. So the children of Israel knew that God is in charge. God is with us. And by the way, they are going Away, are, they are using a route they have never walked before. So they did not have an experience of what laid ahead of them. So they continued just knowing 
we are going to where God promised us to go. So they were just following and going and going and going. And then something happens. Hallelujah. Something happens. In Exodus chapter number 14, the first three verses, God starts to introduce in some things. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp at Pihahiroth. 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 These names are difficult. Pihahiroth. That name, it's good. Shikem Zuri. Pihahiroth. Praise God. Pihahiroth. Between Migdol and the sea. Opposite Baal. Zephon. You shall come before it by the sea. Now listen to verse number three. For Pharaoh will say the children of Israel are bewildered by the land, the wilderness, and has closed them. So God says, Moses, stop. Let the people come. Let them stay here. So they were moving. Now they stop moving. They camp. You know what a camp means? It means you stay there for, 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 for a, a, a few days. So they camped. They put their tents and everything. And God did that for a purpose. That became a trap for the enemy. Hallelujah. God made them to camp for him to be able to trap the enemy. Hallelujah. When they camp, God sent his spirit to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is charged up and is told the children are bewildered. They have not, they have gone, they have gone the Red Sea way. They have not gone the other way that we know. They have gone the Red Sea way. They are not able to cross the Red Sea. Follow them. Pursue after them. You will catch them up. And now these have sat down. They are seated. Eating probably. Enjoying themselves. They don't know what is happening on the other side. But you see, God is brewing up the other camp. And the other camp is running to come and get hold of them. To arrest them. To capture them. Now they are coming. But God is in charge. Hallelujah. Can you tell your friend God is in charge? You are not saying anything. Can you tell your friend God is in charge? Praise God. God is in charge. Sometimes it will look like God has left you. But at the moment, let me tell you church, let me tell you and you hear this and keep it. If you write it, write it somewhere. The moment you feel that God has left you, that is the moment that God is present. Hallelujah. The moment you feel I've been isolated, I'm alone, that is the time God is present. Why am I saying so? Because the devil wants you to believe that God has left you to mess up with your life. But God is present. Hallelujah! So the time you feel life has become so hard, jump up, rejoice and celebrate because God now is manifesting himself. Hallelujah! A trap has been set and the devil is coming. He's saying today I'm going to finish them. Today I'm going to wipe them out. Today is my day. The devil is pursuing you. He's saying, I will get hold of them. Today, now I'm Aliza. Today, I'm wiping them out. Hallelujah. Haven't you gone through situations that you would think that you will not make it up? That you will not come out, out, out of it? You look at it and you say, God, I think this is my deathbed. I'm not able to come out of this situation. It is so difficult. You look west, east, south, everywhere. You don't see any hope. Of you coming out of it. Brethren, I come to tell us this morning. At that moment you feel so low. God is very present. Hallelujah. God is very present. God is very present. When you feel that you cannot make it. When you feel life has got no meaning. When you feel you've been rejected by people. They are talking against you. God is present. The devil has noticed your potential. 
and now it brings it brings frustration your way. So as you can run away, you can run away, you can you can give up and run. But at that moment, when frustration are coming, when difficult moments are coming, when you don't know how you're gonna escape out of that way, hey, I come to tell you, God is present. Hallelujah. God is in charge at that moment. Hallelujah. God is in charge. And God will allow things to happen. So that he can exalt himself. Praise God. That's why I began by telling you. When everything is rosy. Everything is good. You, God is not present. God is not present. If everything is just going smooth. Because it's not present. The devil has gotten up. And is now messing you. Because in the end. You will even stop going to church. You'll stop even doing what you need to do. You'll stop giving. You'll stop everything. Because the devil has gone in. But at the moment you find a kind of assistance coming in. And you say, God, you will get me out. And when God gets you out, I tell you, you'll come and celebrate and rejoice. And say, God has indeed gotten me out of this. I thought it was going to completely finish me. But God has gotten me out of it. Hallelujah. So there is a place that is called... Be a hero. Be a hero. Hallelujah. There is a place called be a hero in our lives. That is a place where God is setting a trap for your enemy. Praise God. That is the place God is setting a trap for your enemy. Because your enemy looks and says, Ata rent ya nyumba meshindwa, kulipa. He looks and says, Ata watoto school fees, hakuna meshindwa kulipa. He looks and says, he looks and says, but you are at, at that place. Be a hero. Hallelujah. God has set you in that place. And you see, it is in this place where the children of Israel now saw Pharaoh and his army coming after them. And what are they doing? They have sat down Camping. Everything is okay. We are resting. And looking ahead, they see. Now they stand up confused. They don't know where to go. Because the enemy now is advancing and is coming on chariots, on horses. You are on barefoot. You have children. They don't have children. You have animals. They don't have animals. You have women. They don't have women. They are men of war. And they are running towards you. And you are in a place where you cannot run. Looking at the back, you see the army coming. Looking at the other side, you see the ocean, the sea. At this place, at this place, you are there and wondering, God has come to finish me at this place. Now, this is my deathbed. This is where God is finishing me. And it is the children of Israel, they, they, they cried out. They cried out. Let me read just a few verses as I skip. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And what did they say? They said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? These are people who are painful. Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? These are men who are crying. Women who are crying. Literally they are crying. They are shedding tears. They are weeping. They are saying you've come to kill us. The whole nation of Israel. You brought us out of a place. Even if we were in bondage. But we were safe. Nobody was killing us. Now you have brought us here to kill us. Moses. 
What did you listen? Did you listen to God? What is the thing that you have done? The faith that they had in God when they saw the pillar and the pillar was still there has gone. The faith that was there when they saw the pillar of fire and of a cloud has vanished. Why? The enemy is advancing towards them. Praise God. So difficult. The enemy is advancing towards you and you don't know what to do. But this morning I came to tell you, you know what to do. Hallelujah. What to do is right within your hearts. Hallelujah. We possess the power to change the circumstances around us. Hallelujah. They wept. They cried. But you see God in heaven was saying to them, Okay, you can express your emotions. Sometimes you cry. It's not bad to cry. You are expressing your emotion. Express it. Hallelujah. You are expressing your pain. But the Bible says the morning is only for a night. There's a rejoicing that comes after it. Hallelujah. The pain will be there. But something is coming to take away the pain. Praise God. So they were in so much pain. And God was looking into, out of heaven. Looking down unto them. And just saying they don't know what I'm doing. Had they known what they're doing. They would really trust in me. They would really hope in me. But he said. See they don't know. Let them weep. Let them mourn. Let them cry. Because help is coming their way. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I love this. Uh, a few verses here. From verse number 13. I love them because. They should speak to your life. They should speak to my life every day. When you are in situations. You don't know how to come out of them. Let verse number 13. To, to verse number 16 speak to you. And this is, this is what it says. And Moses said to the people. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. There was one man, only one in the multitude of thousands who understood God. Who knew the mission of God? Who knew what God is doing in the midst of difficulties? He knew what God is doing. Hallelujah. That's why I come to tell us this morning. Let us be like Moses. When the circumstances are too difficult. Let us know the one who called us is faithful. He'll provide a way of escape. Praise God. So Moses says to them. Don't be afraid of those Egyptians. And they are looking at them and they are advancing. And Moses is saying, don't be afraid of them. And the people are wondering, what is this Moses really saying to us? That we should not be afraid of them. That we shall see them no more again. And they are coming towards us. I mean, this does not make sense to us, Moses. What are you saying, Moses? We are about to die and you are saying we should not be afraid of these people. They are coming to us. The children are grabbing the clothes of their parents. They are hiding between their legs and everything. Everybody is crying. They have even left the care of animals. No one is concerned about the animals. They are concerned about their lives. And they don't know where to go. Praise God. But there is somebody who is speaking the word of faith. He's saying these people, you shall see them no more. Don't be afraid of them. And today I come to tell you and I come to tell myself. And even you is watching us. Don't be afraid of what you are going through. Praise God. Because for sure it, it shall come. It shall come. For sure it shall come. And some of us may be passing through it. Hallelujah. But this morning God is encouraging me. And is giving me strength to know that. Ah, the fact that I'm going through it. I shall see it no more. 
Alléluia. I shall see it no more. There's one who is in charge. Hallelujah. He continued to say, The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Then God speaks to Moses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when you speak words of faith, then you attract God also to start speaking to you. But when you complain, God does not speak in the midst of complaint. The people were complaining. God was quiet. When Moses spoke the word of faith, God also started speaking. Praise God. Look for something that can encourage you. Just a word that will encourage you out of your situation. Speak it. Hallelujah. Because it is going to activate something in the spiritual realm. The angels are all over. Hallelujah. The angels are all over. Yesterday, uh, my wife was telling me uh, an experience that my sister-in-law has gone through. A terrifying experience. One time I shared with Pastor briefly. A terrified experience. Terrified. Where demons were coming into the house. And you come and you find all the clothes have been removed from the wardrobe. You kept money. Come count in the morning, it is less by a certain amount. Wake up the following morning, it has increased by a certain amount. Demons were coming. A child who was in form four has been tormented for very many months by a co-wife in the family. And on this occasion, when the mama was crying and crying, she didn't know what to do. God opens the eyes of that girl, young girl, and she starts seeing the heavenlies. She sees the demons and she sees the angels. And she tells mommy, I can see the angels are here. They are very beautiful. And they are fighting with the demons. And sometimes he would say, I can see the angels are being defeated. But God has brought in more angels. They are winning. So the mother would wonder, what is this girl telling me? But the girl was telling her that there is something that is happening in the spiritual realm. In the midst of what you are going through, God is right inside. So God had opened the eyes of this young girl. And she's been delivered completely by now. Praise God. She's back in school. Hallelujah. She has suffered almost for a whole year. But she was able to see angels. And she was able to see demons. Fighting to save your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. God will come in the midst when you speak a word to him. God will release the angels to fight for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. God will release angels to fight for you. So now God speaks. What does God say in verse 15? And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your road and stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children shall go on dry land through the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. What they feared most, one of the things they feared most, which was the sea. God says, don't be afraid of the sea. I'm going to perform a miracle that will make you not be afraid of your enemy. Hallelujah. God says, stretch out your hand towards the sea as the people move forward. And I will divide the sea and they will march on dry land. Hallelujah. Moses gives the command and he tells the people, move forward. Now they listen. They start moving, not being sure of what Moses is saying to them. But it is good to have a commander. Hallelujah. It is good to have a man of God who listens from God. Praise God. That's why we have the minister of God in the house this morning. Praise God. People who listen from God, they will go ahead of you and they will tell you, 
follow me. If you want to be safe, follow me. And if you're afraid, go your way and they will suffer. Moses was a man of God and he said, move forward. And the people began moving forward toward the sea. Praise God. Moses lifts the hand and the sea divides itself and the land, the ground becomes dry and the people are excited once more again. Hallelujah. Those that were afraid, they now have excitement. But God has opened the sea for us to move. Praise God. Hallelujah. A miracle has happened. And people are now happy. Children now are celebrating. They are running and running very fast to cross over the other side. Praise God. They are not as much as afraid of the devil or the enemies that are following them because a miracle has happened. So they were not thinking about the, the Egyptians anymore. Hallelujah. When God does a miracle for you, you forget your past. Your past becomes history. You don't dwell on the past. The children of Israel did not look. We, have, we don't see anywhere where they complained to Moses in the midst of the sea, telling him they are, they, are, they are pursuing us even in the sea. They didn't. They knew if God has done this miracle, they will not get close to us. Praise God. And behind them, God puts that pillar. So they are coming, running, and they cannot see the people they are chasing. You know, if you don't see your target, you don't even have the vigor and the strength to follow. You have to see your target. The Egyptians could not see the target. Though they knew they are going in this direction. And they would still pursue them. And God comes in the midst of all this. Hallelujah. Because God is showing himself that he is God. It doesn't matter what happens. Because God shall remain to be God at every given time. Hallelujah. So we should not be so much concerned about what is happening. That's why Jesus said, don't be afraid about what you'll eat, what you'll drink. All these things, don't be afraid about them. I mean, that saying is so difficult anyway to believe or even to hold it, to move on with it. But we endeavor, we try as much as we are able to live by it. Praise God. Because God says, don't trust on this other thing. Trust in me. Just believe in me. Because if you believe in me, then I am able to make ends meet for you. If you believe in me. Hallelujah. So we should not look at the problems that are surrounding us. We should not look at them. Let us not fix our attention on what is behind. Rather, let us fix our attention on what is ahead of us. And who is ahead of us is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let us fix our attention on God. Let us look at what God is saying. Don't look at what the enemy is doing. Hallelujah. Sometimes you're telling me, Pastor, you even don't know probably what, uh, what it is that I'm going through. Yes, I don't know. And probably I don't even need to know. And you also don't know what I'm going through. And probably you don't need, also need, need to know. Praise God. But do I fix my eyes on what I'm going through? No. I have to look ahead to the one that is able to change what I'm going through. Praise God. And he's, he's in charge if I give him the opportunity to, to take charge. He's in charge if I give him. If you give him the opportunity, he will take charge. Praise God. Now the Egyptians are pursuing and they are following after them. And they are just almost catching up with them. And who is God? God comes... To do something in verse 25. Verse 25. And he took off their chariot wheels. So that they drove with difficulty. And the Egyptians now start to speak. They now say let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. The Egyptians had not learned. 
they did they had not learned. Moses performed ten terrible miracles. They never learned. Even after the, their firstborns all died, they are still following the children of God. The devil will never learn. Will still follow and pursue after you. He will never learn the experience of the past. Jesus did a miracle on the cross. He defeated the devil. He gave him a knockout. And he gave us victory. But the devil will never learn. He will keep on coming after you. He will never learn. But when he keep on coming after you, God is doing something. Now, they start to speak. Hey, now we are in trouble. I pray that the devil will speak he is in trouble when he, can, when he is in a way that he can never redeem himself. The enemies that are surrounding you, let them speak of the trouble that is surrounding them and they be unable to get out of those challenges. They have fought you many days, even back in our rural areas. There are people who never sleep. They are all the time going to witches. They are all the time looking for, for ways that they can bring you down, that you don't develop. All over. But God is doing something in the midst of all these things that are happening around us. Praise God. Because the enemies, they will never sleep. But look what God is doing. God comes and starts to interrupt their mechanism of moving. Their chariots, wheels, they start uh, becoming difficult to drive because God has knocked them. He has just destroyed something. And then they begin to say, this is a man of God. This is a man of God. That's what the enemy will start speaking. He will start saying, this is a man of God. This is a woman of God. Let us leave him alone. But they will not escape. Hallelujah. Because they have pursued you to an extent that they will never be able to escape. Hallelujah. The enemies, the magician, the sorcerers that have been gathered around you to bring you to, down to destroy you. They are coming and probably they are celebrating because they see some miseries in your life. I come to announce to you this morning that none of them will survive. Hallelujah. None of them will survive. They have gone too far. Hallelujah. They have gone too far. And they will not be able to come back. They will realize that you have a God in heaven. Hallelujah. And I pray let the enemy realize that you have a God in heaven who fights for you. Praise God. They will realize you have a God in heaven who fights for you. And they will not be able to retreat and get away. Ah, they will not. They are going to perish. Hallelujah. They are, believe my word. I'm speaking to you and I'm speaking to myself as well. Praise God. The wizards the sorcerers, the magicians that are all around our lives, even here in Mombasa, even here in Mombasa, even here in Mombasa, even you who is following this, those that are following and pursue after you, I tell you, they will not escape. They will not escape because God is in charge. Hallelujah. God is in charge. They are coming after you and saying, uh, we are going to destroy them. We are going and they are celebrating. <laughs> the Egyptians were celebrating because they had chariots. They had horses. They had the best. Actually, Egypt was the best army at that time in the whole world. They had the best army. So, nothing would stand in their way celebrating. But God is in the midst of everything that is happening. Hallelujah! That is what gives me strength to move on. Praise God. Praise God. Even when I sleep hungry, I don't have money to buy food. I celebrate because God is in the midst of my miseries. Hallelujah! If you don't believe, then it is you who does not want to believe. But I believe with all my heart that whatever comes my way that seems to pull me and to draw me back, God is in the midst of 
eats. Hallelujah. And when the victory will come out, it will not be a secretive victory. You will not need to shout. It will come out by itself. That's why we are able to read all these stories in the Bible. These things were never hidden. They were very loud. And we shall read them for generations and generations. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now God has begun to do something. And they say let us flee away from the face of Israel. For the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. They are now scared. Then the Lord said to Moses. Stretch your hand over the sea. That the waters may come back upon the Egyptians. On their chariots. On, on, their, on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. When the morning appeared and the sea returned to its full depth. While the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptian in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. And all the army of Pharaoh that came into, this, that, that came into the sea after them. Not, not so much as one of them remained. Praise God. Hallelujah. In verse number 4. Just go back and read what God said in verse number 4. This is what God said. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them and I will gain honor, hallelujah, over Pharaoh and all his army that the Egyptian may know that I am the Lord. Ah, and they did so. Hallelujah. Whatever God is doing for you is for honor to his holy name. Hallelujah. It's for honor. God is doing this for honor. You are in trouble and you are wondering how you are going to get out. But God is going to get you out because God wants to be honored through what is going to happen to you. Hallelujah. God is looking for honor. God says I will make the heart of Pharaoh so hard and he will pursue after them. And I can tell you your enemies, God makes their heart so hard and they pursue after you. But in the end, in the end, God brings you victory. God brings you victory. God brings you victory. And who is celebrating? God and the angels in heaven are celebrating. Hallelujah. Because honor has gotten back to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is in charge. Hallelujah. God is in charge. It doesn't matter how. Oh, I celebrate God because he is in charge. Hallelujah. God has taken charge over you. God has taken charge over everything. God is in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, can you stand up and celebrate and jump, 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 jump. God is in charge. Hallelujah. Jump, rejoice before the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God is in charge. God is in control. Hallelujah. God is in control. Hallelujah. The enemy will not celebrate, but God will celebrate. The people of God will celebrate. Hallelujah. We shall have a celebration. Because when God gets honor, there is celebration. You may sit down. Hallelujah. When get, God gets honor, there is celebration. Praise God. When get, God gets honor, there is celebration. Praise God. Let God take charge. Praise God. Let God take charge. Hallelujah. I will stop there. Now, God will give us another opportunity. We shall continue with this. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you so, so, so
so much. Oh, we bless you, Almighty God. Because in the world, oh God, we don't live in isolation. But the devil has picked his tent right in this world, Almighty God. And the trouble that he, he began in heaven is continuing with it, even right here in down, down on earth. But God, you have done something great and tremendous for us because, oh Lord, even when the devil is in charge, oh God, you have given us the Holy Ghost of our lives, almighty God. And you have given us power over the powers of darkness. You have given us victory, almighty God. We are triumphant, almighty God. We are triumphant, almighty God. At times, almighty God, we go through pain, O oh Lord Jehovah. But this morning, God, you have taught us through your word that, oh God, even when we get through it, you are in charge, O oh Jehovah. And we bless you, almighty God. Because you've got a way for us to come out. You have got a way for us to come out, oh God. You fight our battles, almighty God. You fight our challenges, almighty God. This morning, I thank you, almighty God, for the believers in the house of God. Let this word, oh God, that you have brought to us work miracles in our lives. Father, I pray that we shall hold on to this word, almighty God. Because we don't live in another world. We live in, to, in this world where the devil also lives, almighty God. And therefore, God, the experiences like what the children of Israel went through, oh God, are all over our lives, almighty God. And it is because of this, almighty God, that we want to be close to you, almighty Father. Lord, we thank you because Moses was thus close to you, almighty God. And when Moses spoke a word of faith, oh God, you showed up. And you gave direction, almighty God. How I pray that, oh God, that we shall live at the word of God. Father, I pray it shall not get out of our lives, oh Jehovah. Because that is what gives us victory, almighty God. Your word gives us victory, oh God. Our faith in you, God, gives us victory. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. You could be following us. You're following this message from wherever you are. And you have not given your life to Jesus. You know, if you don't have Jesus, then God will never take charge of your life because there's somebody else who's controlling your life. But today, God has to control your life. So if you want to get saved, and I know you, you want to get saved, of course. Repeat these words. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life change me, save me. Write my name in the book of life and take charge of my life. I thank you. Father, we thank you for our believers that have given their lives to you, O oh God. And even them, O oh mighty God, that are struggling in life, Jehovah, even right here in this congregation, O oh mighty God, people that are struggling, reaching points, O oh mighty God, and they don't really know what to do, oh God. Jehovah, this morning you are saying to us that you are in charge, oh Jehovah. You are in control, oh God. This morning, Almighty oh God, you just want to do it for us, Almighty oh God. You know, all this is for your glory, my God. Where else do you receive glory, oh God, but from us? Lord, these miracles have to happen, Lord, for you to receive glory, oh God. And I pray for this congregation. Father, I thank you. You are in the midst of us in this meeting and you want God to, to, to help you in a way. Just lift up your hand. We want to pray together. You may be going through challenges, 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 and you just want this word to, to make an impact in your life. You know, it's by faith that our lives change, that, that we get transformed. And you want God to, to give you that power to be able to call upon him like Moses did when he was facing all the resistance from the children of Israel. 
you might be facing resistance even from your own family. They have never accepted you as a saved person. They speak all evil against you. Sometimes you, 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 you don't even feel like going home because they will ridicule you, they will laugh at you and even say things that if your God is true, why are you going through this? You are here and you are going through this stuff. You can just come here and God will help you. Is there anyone by lifting your hand that is a show that you really want God to get into your life and that handle this? Father, we thank you, Almighty God. We thank you, Almighty Father. Probably there's somebody over the media who is watching us and want this miracle to happen to their lives. And could be there be people here, Almighty God, that they just feel shy of standing up, oh God, that they should come before you. Mighty God, I pray that we as saints, as believers, Almighty God, the key thing that we need is to have faith in you, to speak your word, oh God. Help us speak your word in circumstances that we go through. Father, I thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate this wonderful God. Hallelujah. God is good. Praise God. And, uh, and, and we honor him. We adore him and we bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Uh, I want we give our offerings. Then I will welcome pastor who will come and conclude the service. We've been away. Clap, 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 clap. You, are, you appreciate God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We've been away. I've been away myself for a long time as well, almost two weeks. Pastor also had a mission also. So it happened that one of the Sunday, last Sunday, both of us were not in the house of God and uh, we were out. But the praise report is great in the house of God. Hallelujah. We thank God that we are back. And the work of God continues on. Hallelujah. So we want to give our offering this morning. So just take your offering. And then uh, the Asha will help me with an envelope and a pen. So that I can also give mine. And uh, God will do us good. If you are giving. If you are giving. Uh through the pay bill it is right in front of us so you can just get there and look at it and uh, give your offering through it because God is blessing us in a big 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 way If you've uh, paid your offering, if you've lifted it up, let us just lift it before God. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless your holy name, O oh God, because of the opportunity to, to give this into the house of God, Lord. I pray that you accept this offering and you bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let us give unto God this morning. We continue being strong in the word, in prayer, in faith, in gathering together, coming together, and also in, 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 in carrying burdens that fall onto us. Praise God. Our brother Barasa, you know, she lo he lost his wife. I was in the burial on Saturday, that was just last week. And uh, we thank God for all of us that... Uh, that were able to participate uh, in escorting our sister who is now with the Lord. And uh, we thank God so much because everything went on well.
Hallelujah. I was at home afterwards because of some few things here and there. And uh, I was also blessed. And one, one of the things that, uh, that, that blessed me, you know, uh, I was in our local church. You know, at home there we have got these local churches. It is the PAG. You know PAG? Pentecostal Assemblies of God. And uh, my stepmother was, uh, was, was, uh, was uh, uh, retiring from our position. You know, they hold positions very, 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 very highly. They normally call them Mama Assembly. <laughs> I don't know what we call that in this house or if you have got those kind of uh, leadership. But that's not the important part of it. Uh, when I was given the opportunity to, to speak, and I told them, uh, I'm from JCC, Mombasa. Jomv. So, the preacher who came to preach afterwards from the headquarters, you know, is a man who knows JCC. <laughs> and what he said is what makes me speak. Hallelujah. You know, they are, they are also doing a construction. Their church needs a floor like ours, actually. So they said, when you have somebody from JCC, to Najua Ata E, Floor E, Imewe Kwe, Akuna Kazi Apa, Zabu JCC Nikanisa Kubwa. Then he said, You know, their bishop, he owns, he has a chopper. Akenda Kubiri, and I get a helicopter, Pap. And then the Kifika, and a shock helicopter, and a Ubiri, and I get a helicopter, Kishuka. Wow. Nikasema, surely. People are dreaming big for our papa. Hallelujah. Our papa has a dream for a chopper. And already people know that he has a chopper. But he's using all over. <laughs> Praise God. So this ministry of ours, we need to hold it strong. Because it has got a very big testimonies. So sometimes you go in a place and uh, you can never hide yourself. Now if somebody says that this is, uh, comes, and I say, uh, what? I don't know. He gives the congregation as a very big congregation. So he says, you know, as a mojawa wa kwa hapa ndani. So sisi tunajua tu floor yetu hapa ime? Imeisha. Na mi rauli nasema jameni. Sita sema ya kwetu. Manaki, I also know in our place, you also need a floor to finish our church. But then it's good to have a name. Praise God. So this is a strong ministry. We have got big names out there. And I pray that if we take the word of God, the way it's supposed to be taken. So when we go out there, they see you as a big person from a big ministry. So you hold a big position. Praise God. Let that be uh, in you as we serve him. Hallelujah. If we may put our hands together, I will give past opportunity to close the service. appreciate God for Pastor John. Bless the Lord for a very encouraging statement from heaven. God is in charge. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you are not in charge. It's God. You are not in charge. It is God. Say amen. We bless the Lord for speaking to us this morning. We pick up that statement as our statement this week. And trust God that whatever happens, you will not waver to the left nor to the right. You will focus on God who is, on, who is in charge and trust him. Bible says, blessed are those who trust in the Lord. They are like a tree that is planted by the riverside. Drawing the strength from the source that is assured. Even in famine, the Bible says that we will always produce results. We will have fruit. When God is in charge, we can be sure. Praise be to the Lord. 
So let's appreciate God. Give a clap offering to the Lord for that word this morning. I pray that you will live like Samuel. In the days of Samuel, God's word never fell to the ground. It had a surface. It had somebody to say, yes, Lord. And that is our portion. Praise be to the Lord. We also want to thank God, like Pastor Jonah said, we were on a journey and we are back. We blessed the Lord last Sunday. I was ministering to students in Taita Taveta University. We know them. They came here sometimes back. I had a whole weekend from Friday to Sunday, and it was a blessing. I appreciate God that students got saved. Let's give the Lord glory. Let's give the Lord glory. Students got saved, and uh, you are able to minister to them, and we thank God. I went with my wife. We also traveled to Western, and we were back last night, part one. We give glory to the Lord. We just want to make some notices. You could be here, you are a visitor, you've never been with us before. We can appreciate you by the raising of your hand. Kuna mgeni ajawai kuwa na sisi siku nyingine, tutashukuru mungu kwa ajili yake. Amen. If you know you are a visitor, you've never been with us, raise your hand. We appreciate God. I don't see any raised hand. There is a hand over there. Thank you so much. Thank you, we really appreciate. Tunashukuru kwa ajili ya kuja kwako. Brother Chris, just wave your hand. You'll be speaking to our visitor after this. He's right here. And the Lord will bless you. Praise be to the Lord. Some announcement this week from 19th to 21st. All men are gathering in Pakistan. We have our men's conference. It is set. The atmosphere is already charged with glory and revelation and power. If you want to excel, go where God is moving. If you want to succeed, position yourself where things are happening. So all men, we must remind ourselves that from 21st, from 19th to 21st, 19th is Thursday, Friday and Saturday we will be gathered in Pakistan and we will be blessed to be there. Ladies have a meeting in Miritini on 22nd afternoon. 20, 22nd, yes, afternoon. There will be a ladies meeting. All ladies, you are informed from 2 p.m. So you are asked to... Yeah.